A Volusia County Council vote this week paves the way for a controversial fuel storage facility. You're listening to The Wrap from 90.7 WMFE News. I'm Brendan Byrne. The Volusia County Council changed course this week by voting against a temporary pause on industrial development after initially favoring the proposed moratorium. Since late November, county leaders used that pending moratorium to block the processing of any new industrial development applications. But the county's pivot this week clears the way for those applications to move forward, including one proposal for a controversial fuel storage facility in Ormond Beach. The project worries many residents, especially those who live just steps away from where Belvedere Terminals wants to build its proposed fuel farm. It's really close to hell. I mean, in our house, we've got 600 and some houses in there. So you think about how many people would be kind of trapped. It's just kind of like a big black cloud hanging over us. Nobody wanted Ormond Beach to become a, an industrial place. That's ahead on The Wrap. The big stories this week from 90.7 WMFE News. Florida Supreme Court justices heard arguments Wednesday about a proposed constitutional amendment aimed at guaranteeing abortion rights in the state. Abortion rights advocates launched the ballot initiative after the legislature last year passed a law seeking to prohibit abortions after six weeks of pregnancy. Lawyers in Attorney General Ashley Moody's office and anti-abortion groups have raised a series of objections to the proposal's wording and asked the court to block the initiative from going before voters in November. Matt Staver is an attorney for the group Floridians Against Extremism. He's against the initiative. Violates the very simple standards of voter initiatives. They have to be clear and unambiguous. This is not clear. It's not unambiguous. It has these language that is completely undefined. Courtney Brewer, an attorney who represents the political committee sponsoring the ballot initiative, told justices that the proposed wording is clear. Voters understand what is before them, that if a voter doesn't like uh, this amendment, they are perfectly capable of voting against it. Some justices questioned how far the court can go to prevent initiatives from being placed on the ballot. A decision is expected by April. Meanwhile, the court has still yet to give a decision on a separate lawsuit challenging Florida's 15-week abortion ban, which comes down to privacy. In September oral arguments, the American Civil Liberties Union said the 15-week abortion ban violated the state constitutional right to privacy. The state argues the privacy clause of the Constitution doesn't apply to abortion services. Dozens of students, parents, and teachers spoke out against district-wide book bans at a protest held outside the Brevard County School Board meeting Tuesday night. WMFE's education reporter Danielle Pryor was there and has this report. Almost 30 books are currently being reviewed after being challenged in the district, including A Court of Thorns and Roses. Outside the meeting, students like Brevard senior Anjani Sharma voice concerns over the proposed bans. She says book bans are detrimental to student learning. I know that in books, you know, these authors highlight their own lives, but also lives of others that I would never be able to understand unless I read that. Eastern Florida State College junior Rosalina Rodriguez says she's upset many of the banned books feature LGBTQ plus characters and themes. Um, I know definitely for me, I definitely started off reading some books about those kind of things and that really helped me um, with who I am. After the hour-long protest, the students continued to speak out during public comment, but at the end of the meeting, the board still decided to remove the book by a vote of four to one. Board member Matt Susan expressed his concerns over some of the sex scenes in the book, along with the community's responses to the book bans. One week, we have a group of people that come in and yell at us that we didn't ban a book. And then the very next week, we have a bunch of people that come in and say, you banned the book. And it's just this seesaw. However, he says he looks forward to doing the important work of looking at books that have been challenged each meeting. Danielle Pryor, 90.7 WMFE News. Orange County leaders are gathering more information to decide whether to again put a transportation sales tax on the ballot in November. As WMFE's Joe Burns reports, the county commission has until April 23rd to decide. Orange County Mayor Jerry Demings heard skepticism from some commissioners like District 3's Mari Uribe on whether to put the surtax before voters again after it failed convincingly in 2022. She says residents continue to suffer financially, that the previous measure's 20-year term was too long, and that there's a lack of trust in county government. To think that people are ready to go and say, I want to support increasing my taxes is going to be very difficult to pass. And if it's going to be anything similar to what we did two years ago, 
I would not even support what we did two years ago. The county now estimates a one-cent sales tax would bring in $759 million a year to address issues like traffic congestion, pedestrian safety, and mass transit. Joe Burns, 90.7 WMFE News. These stories and more on our website. Visit WMFE.org. Black home ownership continues to lag behind white home ownership in the U.S. and here in Florida, hitting a decade high in 2023 with a gap of nearly 30 percent. So if there are disparities in home ownership rates, we should expect follow on effects for other disparities economically. A conversation about those disparities, that's on our website. Visit WMFE.org. The Volusia County Council changed course this week by voting against a temporary pause on industrial development after initially favoring the proposed moratorium. Since late November, that pending moratorium was blocking the county from processing any new industrial development applications. But the county's pivot this week clears the way for those applications to move forward, as WMFE's environment reporter Molly Durig explains, including one proposal for a controversial fuel storage facility. 80-year-old Joe Lynch says her family started vacationing in Ormond Beach back in the 60s. But in 1998, this beloved vacation spot became home. Many people I talk to say the same thing. They came here because they used to vacation in Ormond Beach. They come to Florida, and the next thing you know, they want to live in Florida. But now, Lynch and many of her neighbors in this 55-plus community fear what could become of their peaceful existence here if Belvedere Terminals builds its proposed fuel farm nearby. We're all thinking, what's a fuel farm? Never heard of the term. Volusia County records show Belvedere wants to build a fuel storage and distribution terminal near an existing railroad, just steps away from Lynch's 55-plus community. According to Florida's Department of Environmental Protection, the facility could store up to about 500 million gallons of fuels, like gasoline, jet fuel, and propane. Lynch worries about the proximity to homes. It's really close to house. I mean, in our house, we've got 600 and some houses in there. So you think about how many people would be kind of trapped. For Lynch and many other concerned residents, it's scary to imagine what might happen if something went wrong at the proposed fuel farm, like an explosion or a freight train derailment like last year's in East Palestine, Ohio. But Belvedere Terminals insists the fuel farm would be, quote, more safe than a neighborhood gas station, thanks to the company's highly trained employees and sophisticated preventive systems. At this week's council meeting, Belvedere's attorney, Nick Donkayescu, said state law doesn't allow local governments like Volusia County to stop fuel terminal projects. The law is clear. Fuel terminals are important to the economy, health, safety, and welfare of the state and the counties cannot act to stop these projects. Another pending bill state lawmakers are considering right now, Senate Bill 1628, would double down on that state control by helping private businesses like Belvedere sue local governments for actions that negatively impact them. Concerns about that kind of state control were weighing on Volusia County Council members as they deliberated this week. Here's Council Member and former State Representative David Santiago. The moratorium is not a silver bullet. The legislature is acting that will also probably preempt anything we're doing or trip us up or cause us more harm. Meanwhile, Lynch says her beloved Bear Creek Village is hanging in limbo. It's just kind of like a big black cloud hanging over us. Nobody wanted Ormond Beach to become a an industrial place. Industry is what Lynch says she wanted to leave behind in Maryland, where she grew up just outside of D.C. I grew up with that, and it was just so nice to come to all this quiet. It's just peaceful here. You can hear distant insects or birds. Lynch says she and her husband love their daily walks, waking up to the sunrise over their pond. But right now, she's just hoping industry will hold off long enough for them to live out their golden years in the tranquility that first drew them here to Central Florida. The coastal areas are just gorgeous over here, and you just hate to see these big industrial things coming in. I mean, really, it takes away from why you moved there. If they come in, I think I just would hope that I could be gone. I really do. In a statement, Belvedere Terminals told WMFE News it'll work with county staff on next steps to resubmit site plan applications and that the company plans to invite community members to town hall style meetings designed to provide a better understanding of the facts about the fuel terminal. Molly Durig, 90.7 WMFE News. 
That's it for the wrap this week, but coming up, starting Tuesday, the Senior Smiles Mobile Denture Unit will begin serving Osceola County residents 55 and older. It'll make stops around the county, bringing them low-cost and easily accessible dental care and dentures, too, if that's what they need. 60-year-old Josiah Rivera was at a ribbon cutting for the 45-foot office trailer. He's going to be the first to get dentures. I'm the very first one to receive the the opportunity to have a great smile again. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've smiled, showing my teeth. WMFE's Joe Burns brings us that story. That's next week on 90.7 WMFE News. Stay listening. This podcast is produced by 90.7 WMFE News with assistance from news director Latoya Dennis and digital director Ryan Ellison. I'm Brendan Byrne. This is The Wrap. <laughs>